Hey guys, happy Thursday. I wanted to pop in for my sometimes weekly Facebook Live and talk a little bit about this topic that um, has come up a lot for me in the past couple weeks and I love that my hair is sticking straight up. Um, so why to think twice before telling your tween and teen to eat clean? So I, I really thought about doing this uh, presentation and I was a little nervous because I know that a lot of you guys use that term a lot and it's gonna see, might feel like I'm picking on the semantics of the word or that I'm picking on you and I'm not. So please know that and please know that I know that everyone wants to be healthy or at least most people do and it's really, really, really easy to um, do stuff when you mean really well that you don't realize might backfire on the other end of it. So this is just kind of a PSA on how it might backfire. And I wanted to just reach out and tell you guys that kind of stuff because I work with teens every day on health coaching and nutrition coaching. And it may seem like I want to teach them to eat clean too. And I do by the definition we might consider clean eating, but there's a different way to go about it. So when we, when we talk about the semantics of the word, eating clean, we, pl we, we un unknowingly know that we're placing judgment on food itself. And food, as we all know, is one of the most fundamental needs we have as humans to stay alive. And when we judge one of our most fundamental needs, which we do for other things too, we have clean water, we, have, we judge the roofs that go over our heads, we, go, we judge all sorts of things, right? And, and it's really easy to do that. I, there's a million reasons that we all as humans do that, which we can talk about that later. But when we place judgment on food, what we knowingly or unknowingly do is place people, food, all sorts of things into lesser than categories. So there becomes this whole like ranking system. And as we know with people, when we make people feel lesser than by discriminating or by judging, it might get us in trouble in places that we didn't intend to. And with kids and teens, it can happen with food really, really quickly. So ideally, right, with clean eating, what we might look up and if we Google that and look it up, it's going to be like reduce your chemicals, reduce artificial additives, reduce sugar, all those types of things. Yes, those are great things to do. But what I would encourage you and challenge you to do is see if you can do that and talk about that without using the word clean or without using the word healthy even because again we're just kind of judging and putting things into categories and what what happens is our children and our teens are listening and if you haven't worked with a child or a teenager at any point in your life you may not know that their brains work in very black and white ways so very literal ways so when we say something they hear us and they take us really literally and in preschool, kids are taught clean and dirty, right? Like you've got clean clothes and dirty clothes. You've got a clean plate and a dirty plate and things like that. And when we start applying those terms to food, they start to judge it in the same ways that they might judge clean clothes and dirty clothes and clean plates and dirty plates and just simple things like that. Clean car, dirty car. And they might look at food as unsafe or unsanitary or perhaps scary. And... For kids and teens whose brains are so black and white, when they start to fear food, that black and white mind can develop all sorts of habits and all sorts of beliefs around food. And one of those big beliefs and habits they can develop is phobias and obsessions. And in girls especially, this can show up really young. In fact, we know that 80% of girls by age 10 have thought about dieting or have already tried dieting. They're worried about body image. So basically, when we start to instill fear about food in their brains, even when they're really little, they can start to unknowingly, we, we usually don't mean for this to happen, right? They can develop fears around food and therefore obsessive tendencies, uh, disordered eating or other types of phobias. And that's just not good, right? Probably not the intention we're going for when we're trying to teach them how to be healthy, right? So there's that word, healthy. So it may seem really appealing though, right? Like, oh, well, I could scare her into eating healthy. And you know, as parents, that probably works, right? Like sometimes you gotta scare your kid into doing something and, and sometimes you need to do that. But at the same time, 
We can also teach them how to be empowered and make loving choices that serve their body without using judgmental words or categorizing food into certain things. Because, you know, the truth is they can have treats every now and then. They can have things every now and then. It's not bad for them. You know, we all, you know, you need to live a little. I'm not saying go eat donuts and macaroni and cheese every day. But if you do, that's okay, right? If your kid's otherwise staying balanced, you know, with everything else. So we want to make sure we're not setting them up for a bigger, bigger issue without knowing it. And for girls, especially the ones that I work with who are really active, really good at school, um, they might be athletes or performing artists, they already have this mindset of wanting to be a good athlete and a good student. And when you take that same mindset and put it towards food as they get a little more older and knowledgeable about food, they also want to be a good eater. And so they become otherwise obsessed with healthy eating and clean eating. And we know that ideas about clean eating and, and nutritious eating are at their fingertips now on their phones or on the internet. They can find anything, blogs, pictures, Pinterest posts, things like that, that can give them all sorts of information that basically reinforces this idea of being afraid of food. And they'll start cutting out nutrients or not wanting to eat certain things that are vital for their growth and that are vital for their school performance and are vital for them to be good at sports. And the thing I talk about a lot is periods. It, we need the right amounts of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which believe me is a lot more than you think in order to keep normal, healthy menstrual cycles. And that's a girl's monthly report card on her overall health. If her, her cycles aren't normal, healthy, or anything like that, it means she's not getting the right amounts or right types of nutrients. And that's something that needs to be looked at a little bit more deeply. So things that we see on the internet, things that we learn, even from like well-meaning medical providers, they'll say, oh, you know, you should cut carbs. Things that apply to adults, big mantra here, don't necessarily apply to teenagers and kids. They have very different nutritional needs. They have very different medical needs, as we know. That's why they have a completely separate medical provider they see called the pediatrician, all right? So <laughs> they have very different needs from us, than, than us adults. And then teenage girls have very different dietary nutritional needs from teenage boys and tweens as well. So things that might sound good for adults or things that might work and be safe for males in terms of nutrition aren't necessarily the best thing for girls. So those are really, really important things to know, especially for younger girls, when we start teaching them about nutrition to make sure that we're really watching our language. That would be the biggest take home here. See if you can describe making nutritious choices without putting a label on it. You know, making good, empowered, body-friendly, body-loving food choices without saying, oh my God, this is going to clog your arteries or something like that, without using fear to teach. That would be my big take home if you wanna know, well, what do I do, right? And then pay attention to, in girls, period health, see how she's doing if she's old enough to have a period. If she's old enough to have a period and she hasn't had one by the time she's 16, that's a concern about nutrition for sure. Um, and reach out to me if you have questions. I'd be happy to help you guys through this. I always say I speak teenager, so I love to teach parents how to get in touch with their teens, help them make healthy choices, help them be empowered to make healthy choices without creating a huge rift or a lot of uh, conflict in their house, which can happen sometimes. Sometimes I know parents say that it's a lot better when they hear it, when teens hear it from someone else. And that's what I do. I help teens and families figure out how to be nutritious without sacrificing their family life, sacrificing their life and spending a lot of money to do it. So thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate you coming. Um, take home, no fear when we're teaching stuff. Okay, bye.